Our final speaker is a dynamic educator, Mr. Craig Johnson. Mr. Johnson is the superintendent of the American School of Bombay. Prior to joining ASB in 2010, Mr. Johnson and his family lived in Brazil for 15 years, during which he served as a high school principal at the graded school in Sao Paulo, as well as a headmaster of the American School of Brasilia. Mr. Johnson will share his own story of trying to create an ambiance in which educators work to prepare students for the jobs and lives they will lead in the 21st century. Thank you. I'd like to begin the last speech today kind of where Sunita started us. She had an invocation to Lord Ganesha. I think I would like to do the same, but since I can't chant it, I will say Jai, and you say... Or I say... Gumpati Bappa, and you say? Let's try that. Ready? Gumpati Bappa. Okay. Craig's TED Talk. It started out a week ago called this. So those of you that visited the website and said, I'm going to go and watch this, we've changed it. It's now going to be the 12 things that I learned from 16 athletes while I was in Dhaka for four days. That is absolutely what we are going to spend our time on. This is not a picture of my soccer team that went to DACA. This is a picture of a soccer team I coached earlier. But I don't have a picture of the DACA team, so I put this one in. This is a picture of my mother. This picture has absolutely nothing to do with tonight's speech. My dad sent me this picture, and I said, I've got to use this. And I just put it into the Prezi, and I said to myself, let's just leave it there for the four or five days that I'm having these thoughts about what I should say, and let's see if it finds a place. So let's just put that picture there. We'll see in the next 17 and a half minutes if we can find a place for this. The first thing, and the, how this speech was born, is about purpose. We're creating an ambiance as the elixir for sustainable change. The first thing is, why? are we here? This presentation actually began with me asking my 16 boys before we started the matches. I said, why are we here? And what evolved was a series of verbs. I'm here to prove something. I'm here to do. I'm here to learn. And this sort of all began to morph into a mission that pulled the 16 of us together. They felt like we're a team that has a destiny. We're a team that somehow has a purpose that we're here today in Dhaka and going to be for four days. The second thing that I asked them, I said, first of all, I was blown away by their performance. They so far exceeded my expectation that I took the time to talk to them and say, what did we do for the last three months that produced this? And they, they talked to me in 16-year-old language. They talked to me in jock language. And I sort of have taken those notes and I'm, I'm, I'm producing this today. There's an idea of culture. Every one of us that leads an organization, every one of us that tries to create an ambiance in the workplace, we know about culture. But I asked the boys, did we build a culture? Did we create a culture? Did we sustain a culture? Did we tweak a culture? What did we do? And I think we did them all. I want to share a little bit about the culture that I used for the team, and I want you all to be able to translate this into your working place. I've coached 723 young men in the last 22 years. And I, I tell them that. I actually have a list of 99 of my 700 athletes that I have put on to my Hall of Fame. I have their names, I have their positions, I have the years that they played for me, and I say, this is my Hall of Fame. And I have the same thing for the teachers that I have worked with and that have worked for me. This is my Hall of Fame. If I'm going to start a school, these are the 15 people I would start with. And I tell the boys, this is something that you can aspire to. This is a part of what we are. And we share the stories. Culture is about stories. And a physicality of that is I actually have several dozen square meters of quilts. The quilts have been made from the shirts of the teams that I have coached. The metaphor there that you can transfer to your own workplace is phenomenal. Basically, I can show my boys this was the team of 1992. This was the team that Chad Alexander played on. Remember that story I told you about that? This is where it comes from. And this culture, this visualization of culture is very, very powerful because, gentlemen, we are not ordinary. 
And this is part of that culture. You do not want your organization, you do not want your team, you do not want your family to just be ordinary. You want them to do something special and be something special. The soccer ball is the metaphor of what we do. And I actually have a soccer ball that the boys have been signing for 22 years. And I'm able to take that ball and I'm able to tell Alberto Santos here in the picture and say, I want you to keep this ball for the week. You are the most valuable player of the week. I want you to, I'm entrusting this ball to you. And Alberto stands up and Alberto takes the, 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 the ball. And if I could zoom in, the, the pixels don't allow it, but I could zoom in at the faces of the other boys, the pride that they have, the almost envy, like I want that ball. I want to take that ball home with me. And I think that's something that we can do in our organizations very easily. Number three is brand. And that's something this audience will understand. The boys didn't say brand. But what they said was, we need to have people remember, and somehow this zipped way ahead, I'm sorry. I'm going to move back here. We have to have people talk about us. As an organization, you want people to remember your name. Remember? Fame. I want people to remember my name. I want people to remember the team that came in 2011 from the American School of Bombay. They were this. So creating that, I asked my boys, give me a word. I don't know why it keeps doing that. I'm sorry. Ah, give me a word. And we actually sit around in a circle and say, what do you want people to say about you in a single word at the end of this game? And these are, these are some of the words. Imagine a group of people sitting around saying, what do we want people to say at the end of a year, at the end of two years, at the end of five years? This is what the boys came up with. And as an example of that, I want to share a story. Um, we had played a, t uh, a game early on in pool play. And the score between the two teams was two to two. And we met in the championship game. And the championship game was going to be played on this field. And it was very, very muddy. And the earlier games had been played on a beautiful grass. And it was two to two. And we take the field. And I notice that the other team's standing over there. And they're kind of like walking like this to the bench. And we get the boys around and I say, you know what? Let's give them something to remember because this game will start and this game will end in 90 minutes. Let's let them remember this. We lined the boys up before the game, and I said, just run out there and just dive into the mud and seize the field. This is our court. This is what we're going to do. And that's what we did. Look at the blue team. We won this game before it started. 5-0. They did not want to come onto the field with us because we all got up and we were completely muddy, and we said, come, let's play. Welcome to my home court. I think the next thing is, and this is just one of those things we always talk about, is to be clear. But the, the problem is, how do, you, how do you be clear about being clear? Because I thought I was clear. You didn't hear me. You didn't understand me. You didn't explain. The idea of expectations. I want to share the most recent brain research is telling us. Take all of your senses, whatever the impact of that sense is, those collective senses, Vision trumps all of that. You have to draw your expectations. You have to physically show what you mean, what is your purpose. You have to visually show and talk and write. Here's an example. This is a product of a three-hour-long meeting with members of my leadership team. <laughs> this is what we were trying to say. And it's, 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 it's sort of blurry and, and you can't see it because we haven't copywritten it yet and I don't want anyone to steal this idea. But this is how we improve our school. It started with this. We actually sat down and started drawing this. We started seeing this and then we produced it and we're constantly tweaking it. The power of vision to be clear about your expectations cannot be overemphasized. Home court. One of the things I hear a lot are people saying, well, we could if we had. We could if we moved. We could if we had air conditioning. We could. I just want to just let you think about that for a minute and realize really, and I'm guilty of that. We're, we're buying a new school and we're expanding our space. I'm guilty of that, but it's really, it's, it's nonsense. It's really nonsense. This guy stands outside my door on Carter Road. This is what he does. His sign is, solve any problem. You walk up to him and say, what do you do? He says, can't you read? <laughs> and I want to show you how about this home court. This is a picture of uh, one of my, my, my classes at the school. Look at their home court. Look at the pride that they have. Their, their pictures, their words, their calendar, their headphones, their laptops, their friendship, their everything else. They are highly engaged. They are getting a 
top of the world education. So is he. Look at this class. You just want to be a part of this class. You want to pay a very high tuition to go to my school so you can get this class. This is on Carter Road. This is right across from my apartment on Carter Road. This is their school. And let's take a look at him. This is their home court. This is their space. This is what they have made of what they have. So as a team, to sort of say this is our home court is very important. Number six that I want to sort of play with a little bit here is that you want people to perform. And the way that we perform, and we talked a lot about feedback. Feedback can be this elaborate 360 degree online survey that you send to all your constituents and a data analysis, or it could be that. The instant feedback, the thing about coaching, and I, 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 anyone who's ever coached or anyone who's ever played has been in a highly effective feedback organization. And then we move out of the coaching and we forget why we were so effective. This is coaching. Instant feedback. The, the play, stay with me with my metaphor. The play is in action. School is in session. The bank is running. The stock market is started. And I simply say, you, come here. You, principal, come here. Go back in. How often do we take the opportunity in our daily businesses to actually do this? Instant feedback, brutal facts, in your face, this, this, this. Now, get back in the game and go. We need to be able to translate that. Practice. One of the things that irked me as a teacher and as a student is I would see my peers as teachers and I would see my teachers when I was a student give me back my work. And I would look at my grade and I would think to myself, but why? Why this grade? I don't understand. And they would say, redo it. And I would say, redo what? The same mistakes again? In, in, in sports, and if we can once again translate that, it's the following. You can shoot a thousand free throws the wrong way. You will not impre- improve your free throws. You have to stop, tweak, turn, hand, now shoot again. No, nope. come back, redo it. Practice has to be the product Or what we do is the product of the practice. And we need to do that with case studies. I want to throw case studies out the following practice. Not everything is a sport, Craig. We can't just go time out. We just can't bring people in. We can't hold their hand and go like this. No, but what we can do is we can find something from our day. We can turn it into an objective case study and we can practice solving it. How would you solve an irate parent coming to you because their child has been accused of cheating, is going to get a zero on their exam, and they're applying to an Ivy League school? And it's the last day of the semester. Solve it. That's practice. You have to cut. In order to create an ambiance that is sustainable to, for greatness, you have to cut people out of the organization. The question is, who do you cut? When do you cut them? How do you cut them? And I'm just going to share a little bit of the who. Who? on my team. So we knew who our top 13 players were. But between 14 and 24, they were all pretty much the same. So what did we use? What was our rubric to cut? We had conversations, and my question that they didn't know I was asking is, how important is this to you? I was asking them what they do in their off days. What do they do on the weekends? How do you spend your evenings? How many siblings do you have? What do your parents do? What I was trying to... Gage is how important is this team to this player because between those eight, they're all equally good. They're all equally sort of committed, but I wanted to keep the people that meant the most to. So to, for you to define the what, who, where of cutting, but you have to cut because it sends a very powerful message to the people that you've cut and to the people that you have kept. Get dirty. And I mean this in two ways. Here you can see the player in the white holding the player in the blue because who calls the game? The referee's job is to call the game. Play to the referee. The other thing is to get dirty, is to get down into the business that we do. To actually, for principals and superintendents to teach a class. Get down into the trenches. If you, whatever business you have, you need to be in the trenches getting dirty. Have fun. Everyone said this. The conductor that was having fun. The question out there was, which conductor are you? Actually, that wasn't the question. The question a lot of the ASP people were saying, which conductor is Madeline? Which conductor is Craig? Which conductor is Shavi? Which conductor? And I was like, I'm... <laughs> Have fun. 
the power of a, of a sport huddle, right? We, once again, in any business, you can huddle. You can just simply say, 3.15, my office, five minutes, standing up, let's huddle. Look at the power of a huddle. Look at how important that is, metaphorically. We actually talked to the leadership team at the American School the other day. I said, Friday's our last day, tomorrow. I said, do we need to do like a, a sort of a come to Jesus moment, kind of a group hug on Friday? And the vote was no. And I thought to myself, hmm, maybe we should. Maybe we should all just come together. No chairs, no microphone, no anything. Everybody come in at 12, 15. They all stand there and go, what? And I go, just huddle. Okay, now go for vacation. <laughs> but look at, look at the power of physical intimacy. And lastly, celebrate. We so often work so hard and we forget to celebrate. And on that note, I would like to say this picture makes sense. Take a look at what happens in the next six seconds. My dad shot these pictures in sequence. Click, 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 click. First of all, what do you think she's looking at? To move ambiance to as the elixir for sustainable change, this is our organization. We're looking at this going, we are a disaster. Maybe not. Things are happening. Culture is changing. <gasps> look at that. And wow. And you're all still wondering, what is she looking at? She is looking at the tattoo on her grandson. <laughs> and she quickly realized, I got to change my face. <laughs> thank you all very much. And thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Craig, for a very stimulating talk. There's so much in there that I know I'm going to have to re-watch the video about 10 times to get it all.